Yeah, that's exactly right, Andrea. Kasi was actually founded and born from a railroad village. In fact, because of that, this town has seen Boston booms. In 1869, though, Kasi actually became the end of the Houston and Texas Central Railway. Now, let's talk about who it was named after. That would be Theodore Kasi. He was a chief engineer for the railroad and the man who surveyed the road for the town. Development of a town government actually began in 1871. Kasi grew when the oil boom struck the town in 1922. However, production suddenly ended and no other fields were found. Kasi is also the birthplace of the famous Bob Wills, who brought Texas swing to popular and country music. Now, one thing Limestone County loves to brag about is their award-winning women's drill team. The Prime Time Express is made up of 12 amazing women who show perfectly synchronized performances on horseback. For 12 years, they have been captivating audiences, and it started when a few women became too old to be on a 4-H team. Now, currently in their 18th season, and in it since the beginning, Bree Ingram absolutely loves to be a part of a team she calls family. Now, they have captured uh, and, uh, and completed and uh, competed in competitions and fairs from all over, like the Rose Parade and, of course, the Equine Fair, and once in a lifetime opportunities they'll never take for granted. Things like that, it's so rewarding to be able to enjoy ourselves while we're out there riding and performing for crowds. Well, the requirements for joining the team are you must have a horse and, of course, be able to take yourself to practice once a month. They've had a young, they've had as young as eight years to 68 on the team. And, of course, one more thing that Limestone County loves to brag about and prides itself uh, on, Longhorns. And, of course, we're going to speak to one man who is famous for his famous Longhorns coming up. But, of course, we want to bring tourism back to Limestone County. That's what he says. So we're going to hear a little bit more from him later on. But right now we want to bring in our Aaron Moran and what kind of weather has Limestone County faced over the years? You know, typical to all of Central Texas, a lot of severe weather. And we told you about that in the last hour of Good Morning Texas. Altogether, 402 storm reports for Limestone County, and that does include 28 tornadoes since 1880. But one tornado in particular is important to think about when it comes to Limestone County. So in December of 2006, there was a rare winter weather outbreak that was spawning nearly two dozen tornadoes across north and central Texas. An F2 tornado formed near Cossie, spanning 400 yards and stayed on the ground for about 20 miles and along with doing significant damage to trees and structures it killed several livestock it actually struck a home right along CR 635 killing an 80 year old man and injuring several others now with this severe weather event again this was back in December of 2006 nearly 60 homes and businesses were damaged in Limestone County and the governor designated a disaster area so we're expecting rain and even a few storms today in Limestone County and really all across Central Texas as a cold front makes its way into the region later this morning. So for more on that, we'll send it back to meteorologist Felicia Woody in the studio. Well, thank you for that, Aaron. We are looking at sub severe conditions, which is good. That means we're not expecting the severe weather for today, but we could be seeing a few storms. I do want to give a traffic update for those who are heading northbound on I-35. There is a little bit of a slowdown in the construction area just outside of McLean Stadium. Now temperatures, this is where it's going to be the warmest for the entire day because it's actually going to get cooler once that colder air starts ushering in. But right now we are still hanging on to the low and mid 60s across the area and we are seeing rain from San Saba up through Bell, even into McClenny, uh, McLennan and up towards Hill County at the moment. As we turn on the HD radar, you can see that we do have some heavier downpours, especially in San Saba County and even up towards Bosque and Hill County. Let's go ahead and take a little bit more in depth. We still do have that outflow boundary going in just a little bit. That means it's sucking the energy out of the big batch of rain, but there is still a couple of downpours still trying to form right behind it in Bell County. So just south of Temple, maybe some rain there along I-35 at the moment. About to see some shower activity along I-14. So if you are headed out in Harker Heights and Colleen, get ready for some moderate downpours. We are tracking some lightning actually in southern San Saba County at the moment, so just south of actual San Saba, the San Saba, the town. And as we look up towards the north, we are looking at Bosque and Hill County, some light to moderate downpours as well, but no lightning being detected within that. So like I was saying, the temperatures are going to be dropping. We're in the 60s. 
We're going to go down into the 50s here within the next couple of hours, and then we're looking at temperatures falling into the 40s already by the time the sun is about to set. Now, the better chances for those showers and storms are actually going to be later on today in the afternoon and evening where we start to get a little bit more of the development of those showers and storms. And also that wind is expected to be kicking up as well. In terms of how much rain we could be seeing, it looks like by the time this is all said and done by tomorrow, about a half inch to an inch of rain, maybe a little bit more in certain spots. But it lo looks like we should be drying out for this upcoming weekend, but then we're tracking another cold front with some rain for Monday. The acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine will be the first to testify publicly in the impeachment inquiry, telling millions of people what he told investigators. The president will held hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid to the U.S. ally. His transcript released Wednesday revealed he grew so concerned over the issue, he sent a rare cable to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, but received no response. One Republican says none of the evidence points to corruption. There are perfectly appropriate quid pro quos and there are inappropriate quid pro quos. This morning there are new details about the president's actions just as the Ukraine story was starting to gain steam. Multiple sources telling ABC the president wanted Attorney General William Barr to hold a news conference to say that Trump didn't break any laws regarding that July call with Ukraine's president, but Barr declined. The first funerals will be held today for members of the American family allegedly killed by a drug cartel in northern Mexico on Monday. Three mothers and six of their children were gunned down in SUVs while heading to a family function. The victims were all part of a fundamentalist Mormon sect. This morning, two former Twitter employees are accused of spying for Saudi Arabia. The men allegedly used their access at the social media giant to gather sensitive and personal information on critics of the Saudi regime. One of the men, a U.S. citizen, is already under arrest. He was allegedly paid $300,000 by a person identified only as Foreign Official One to gain users' private information. Now, according to prosecutors, the Saudi government recruited the men because the Saudi royal family grew frustrated by growing criticism of its leaders on social media. And more than a dozen business leaders in Colleen are making a trip out to Fort Hood this morning to better get to know our men and women in uniform. It's all part of the Colleen Chamber of Commerce's Leadership Academy, which is made up of business leaders around the area, who are hoping to bridge the gap between Fort Hood and the people of Colleen. I actually rent to a lot of military.